So hi everyone, and uh, thanks uh, Peter for a nice introduction. Uh, so um, is there anyone who already heard about Keycloak? Well, nice. So there are a few people who, who already know it, uh, but maybe not everyone. So I will first try to do some short introduction to Keycloak and explain uh, what it uh, what it is and what its main purpose, <coughs> and then in the uh, next part of the session, we will, I will try to focus on the uh, uh, fine-grained authorization. Uh, so, main features of Keycloak uh, is that it provides authentication for the web uh, web applications. Mostly, it's possible to use it for authenticate other applications as well, but main focus is on web. And uh, SSO, or single sign-on, uh, means that uh, you can point more applications to your Keycloak server. And uh, when, you, uh, uh, when you open your first application, and uh, this application redirects to Keycloak SSO, and user provides his username and password, uh, then uh, after he opens second application, he is automatically locked in, and he doesn't need to add his a username and password again. Single sign out is uh, kind of the same thing, but for logout. So when you uh, like log out from one application in your browser, you are locked out from the address as well. And uh, everything is based on standard uh, standard protocols like OpenID Connect and Summer2 or Out2 and UMA. So all the exchanges and messages between the browser and between client application and uh, Keycloak server are uh, like standardized. Identity management is a uh, very uh, important uh, part of the Keycloak because uh, Keycloak has a database which is able to store all the metadata about users and roles and uh, clients. Uh, so basically when you have traditional web application uh, when you uh, develop all the security by yourself, you usually need to develop login forms uh, when your users need to provide username and password. And uh, you need to implement storage for users and uh, so that you have database where your users are and uh, you need to care about all the things like password hashing. And when you want to add some more tricky things like registration of users or things like forget password link on the login screen, uh, you need to have lots of things to implement. And uh, if you use Keycloak, then all of those things are uh, available for free for you. Um, and Keycloak also has lots of uh, UIs. So admin console allows to easily uh, like uh, manage your users and uh, other metadata. Account management is uh, is useful for end users, so they are able to see their profile and uh, they are able to edit their passwords or other credentials like TOTP, for example. <laughs> and we, of course, provide login forms and uh, optionally things like registration forms or those things like reset passwords uh, and so on. And there are much more cool <laughs> features like uh, Kikolo can be integrated with the uh, uh, social providers like Facebook, Google, or Twitter, so that uh, you delegate authentication to those providers. Uh, it's possible to integrate with any other OpenID Connect provider or some other two provider. It's possible to point Keycloak uh, so that it can provision users from LDAP or SSSD. Uh, there is support for TOTP or Kerberos authentication. Uh, there is support for Teams, which allows you to uh, like customize login forms uh, so that uh, you can add your own CSS. Uh, and events are for monitoring. And there are lots and lots of other things. Uh, but uh, like one of the most important things is the how you actually secure your application. And what, what is helpful here is Keycloak Adapter, which basically is client-side implementation of the OpenID Connect or some specification. And uh, you usually don't need to code anything in your application. Uh, you just need to provide configuration of Keycloak Adapter. And 
usually add some dependencies or something uh, based on the adapter implementation, but typically it's very easy to integrate your app with Keycloak. And for adapters, we have uh, adapter for JavaScript application, we have adapter for, uh, for like servlet or web applications deployed on Wildfly, Jetty, or Tomcat. There is Fuse adapter, Node.js adapter, uh, servlet filter adapter, there is Spring Boot and Spring Security adapter, which I will show in the demo, and we have also generic adapter. Uh, like Gatekeeper, which can be used for any other kind of web application. So this picture shows uh, how OpenID Connect Flow looks like. Uh, the most important part here is that uh, when the user opens the browser and wants to access any application, the application just redirects to Keycloak server. And uh, after the user authenticates uh, on Keycloak side, uh, then there is some other uh, handshake, but in the end, application will receive ID token and access token, which is signed by uh, Keycloak server private key, and uh, then it can very uh, like later in later stage, the, this uh, token uh, can be verified by public key. Uh, so typically, those uh, like front-end applications are accessing some REST services, and they can access them with the access token, uh, which was signed by Keycloak, and uh, the service, which is also secured by Keycloak, can just read the token, uh, which in, HT in REST uh, HTTP requests, the token are sent in the HTTP header, uh, and so service can just read it, and uh, it can verify the signature on the token, and it doesn't need to communicate with the Keycloak server itself, so it's also very good from the performance perspective. Uh, like the only thing needed is that at the very beginning the service needs to download the public key from Keycloak, uh, but then it can use it for verify like thousands of tokens. And uh, there is also a possibility that service will always verify token, uh, but uh, like online verification, but that's not so performant. So in the uh, next step, I will try to show some simple demo of Keycloak. Uh, yeah, so I have already Keycloak running, so I will just uh, restart it, and I will run it at, on uh, port uh, 8180. Uh, so if you want to try Keycloak, by the way, it's very easy. You just need to download Keycloak server from the Keycloak homepage, and uh, you need to unzip it. And uh, that's all. So if you want to try some playing with it, uh, it's usually a question of a few minutes. Or oh, and you need Java, but that's really the uh, only requirement. So it's, it's really, really, really easy to set up. And at this moment, I can open uh, admin console of Keycloak. And I will log in as the, the default user, uh, admin. Uh, and at this stage, uh, we, we can see that uh, there is an uh, admin, admin interface where I can look at existing users. So at this moment, I have just one user, admin. Uh, but what I will do now is that I will add new realm. Uh, realm is something like uh, abstraction for uh, handling like set of users and set of client applications, which will uh, be able to share same SSO session. Uh, so simply said, and I will uh, I will import new realm from JSON file. Uh, yeah. So one of the great things on Keycloak is that when you uh, pre-configure your realm with all your data and users, uh, clients, and so on, uh, you can just export. Uh, it into JSON file, and uh, then you can import it uh, from this JSON file later, <coughs> which is good if you need to migrate between different environments like uh, from stage to production or so on. And I have Realm, which is called Cars, and uh, I've imported it from the JSON file, and I have few simple users here, like user Alice, 
uh, and she is member of some roles, like there is a role called user, uh, which is like important. And clients, uh, clients are something like abstraction for client applications. Uh, so I have a client called Cars App, uh, which represents uh, my uh, application, which I will later show. And uh, there are some metadata which needs to be configured on Keycloak side for that client, like the value to uh, redirect to this, for example, where Keycloak will uh, redirect after the authentication is finished, and uh, so on. And uh, Cars service represents uh, like REST service, which uh, can't itself uh, start the authentication, but it's able to receive uh, better tokens which are sent to it from the ap application, which may be Cars app. And in the IDE, uh, I will probably switch it to presentation <laughs> mode. Um, yeah, so in this IDE, I have two apps, oh, sorry, uh, so app and service, and uh, yeah, so the service is just REST service and only thing which I needed to do on, uh, yeah, and it's Spring Boot, it's Spring Boot REST service, which, so it has application properties configuration file, and uh, here I just need to add a uh, few things, few metadata about Keycloak, like point, uh, point the service to the Keycloak server, and uh, to, to my realm, and to Carl's, Carl's service is name of the uh, client on Keycloak side. There is also client secret, which is used for uh, secure communication between client, uh, client application, and between the Keycloak server. And uh, here, those security pat patterns, uh, security constraints uh, are like typical for J JEE server applications. So basically when I want to access anything under cars, uh, I need to be in the role user. Uh, and I need to have some dependency on Kingcloak Spring Boot Starter in my POM XML, and that's all uh, what, which I need to have in my app. For, uh, for, or for my service. For the app, uh, it's similar. Uh, I just uh, have this configuration <coughs> in application properties and this app is, uh, it represents front-end application and it, it uses Spring Boot and Spring Security so it has also this like, be bean uh, and the security constraints are configured here. So it also requires role user uh, to be accessed. So. I will just uh, run my service and my app. Uh, I'm, I'm just running it from IDE. And yeah, I hope it will start fine. And I will open my app on this URL and uh, it was on port 8080, and now we can see that I was redirected to the login screen, which is Keycloak login screen. Uh, so this, this login screen is provided by Keycloak server. And uh, when I put some username and password of user Alice, uh, I need to also confirm the grand screen. This is an uh, optional uh, thing uh, that uh, if I configure like consent required on my client, uh, it means that the, this consent screen will be shown to users and the user basically needs to grant some permissions to client application that it can access his email and his profile and some other things. Uh, yeah, there are lots of uh, like similar fine grade configurations uh, if you want uh, some customizations, <laughs> but for basic integration, it's uh, really very easy to try it. And uh, now I can see that I am successfully authenticated, and this information of about user like username, email, and name are provisioned from the token, uh, which was 
uh, sent by Keycloak and it contains some metadata, uh, some data about users and some other metadata, uh, like information about his roles. And with this, I can send REST requests to service and I can, uh, like, my service is able to uh, create new cars and, uh, like, ask for existing cars and delete cars and it provisions also pictures of cars so I can look at this nice snowplow, for example. And uh, when I uh, log out and log in as different user, JDO, uh, I can also create some cars, but I have also access to all the cars which were created by Alice because there is basically no uh, fine grade authorization. Uh, so all the us uh, all users which has which have a role user are able to access uh, everything right now. Uh, so in next step uh, we will try to look at uh, the fine grade authorization capabilities uh, which Keycloak provides, uh, and uh, it's quite a new thing. Uh, like Keycloak is mainly now for providing authentication. Uh, but we recently uh, added also authorization support and uh, the idea beha behind it is that we want to decouple authorization from services and from applications as much as possible. Uh, there is also aim to have like dynamic access control model. Uh, we also want to be stick on standards like OpenID Connect and UMA and uh, there is also aim to have privacy support and uh, things like enable sharing of resources between users. So for example, users are able to share their documents or their photos with other users. Uh, and we want to achieve all of this with uh, ideal performance uh, and uh, ideally with uh, not so much requests needed to be uh, sent between Keycloak server and the service and applications. Uh, so the common authorization approach is, uh, is usually role-based or group-based authorization. Uh, so for example, when we want people managers to be able to access information about any employee, you usually in your application ask if uh, you authenticated user is in a role like people manager. Uh, this is sufficient for lots of the applications but for many others it may not be so uh, so nice because for example when there is some change in the business requirements uh, you the role based uh, authorization may not be sufficient basically. For example, you may want that some user is not able to access salaries anymore, but you still want him to be in role people manager because this role is used for many other things in your application. And uh, here you have an issue uh, and uh, because your authorization based on roles is not fine grained enough. So the proposal is uh, to rather focus on the things which user can do and on the resource which, uh, which he wants to like uh, access. So for example, instead of do checks based on rows, uh, we will ask if user uh, is able to do some action like access uh, salary of employee of, or if user is able to change uh, salary of some uh, concrete employee John Doe. Uh, so basically when X can do Y on Z, the X is uh, in Keycloak authorization model, the X is user uh, which wants to do something, Y is uh, action uh, which is called authorization scope, uh, and Z is resource. So in the example uh, above it's something like this employee salary. And policy is the actual implementation of the authorization rule, which can decide if uh, access is granted or not. And uh, permission is basically like binding between results and scope and between the policy. And final result is evaluation. Uh, this is not part of the model, but evaluation uh, is important to decide uh, if uh, like access is granted. 
and uh, more policies can be uh, like uh, added to uh, to permission. Uh, so the overall architecture looks like this. Uh, it looks a bit tricky, maybe, but it's uh, quite easy uh, in the end. So. Uh, like the, when we have client application which accesses resource servers, a resource server is basically REST service. Uh, there is usually policy enforcer which is deployed together with the uh, resource server. So it's uh, like typically it's part of Keycloak adapter. And this uh, policy enforcer uh, checks if authorization requirements are met. And uh, it, it, uh, invokes, it can invoke Keycloak for this. And uh, Keycloak provides some REST APIs like authorization API and uh, protection API. Uh, authorization API is for doing authorization de decisions and protection API is for manage resources and permissions and other objects. Uh, and uh, administration uh, is possible from Keycloak, admin console, but uh, there are lots of things are uh, accessible through REST API. And uh, Keycloak also provides storage for all the metadata like uh, resources, scopes, permissions, and policies. And evaluation engine that is able to decide if, uh, if access should be granted or not. So for configuration of fine-grained policies, for basic configurations, you need to create some policies and resources, scopes, and permissions on Keycloak server side. And on the service side, like on the adapter, you need to have policy enforcer. So I will try to uh, I will try to show this. Uh, so, like my basic service, which at this moment is not uh, doesn't use fine grade authorization. Uh, so I want to add some uh, more fine grade authorization for specify that just uh, some. Yeah. So I want to have fine grade authorization for creating cars right now. So the first thing which I need to do is to enable this authorization switch on my car service. And when I save it, I can ha I have new tab called authorization. Uh, and uh, here I can add some resources, for example. So this default resource is always created by default when you create, uh, when you create, when you enable authorization for your service. So I will create a new resource called car resource, which will represent car. And uh, yeah, so display name could be, will be car resource as well. Type is not mandatory. So URL is not mandatory, but I will use cars uh, because I, my service is listening under cars. And scopes is our actions, so I will, I will need to create some authorization scopes or action which I want to do with cars. So I want to be able to have scope for creating car and uh, for example also for viewing car. And I want to like uh, add those scopes to my car resource. And uh, yeah, so I have now resource and scope, and I need policy which will be able to decide. So by default, there is default policy here, uh, which is based on JavaScript. And I will, for policies, we have lots of implementation of various policies, uh, like role-based policy is really uh, maybe simplest one, and it just checks if user is in, uh, is if user is member of some particular uh, role. Uh, so I will just start with this one and I will specify that the user needs to be a member of admin role to pass this policy. Uh, and I need to create permission, which is the last thing. And uh, so I want to specify that for creating cards, uh, yeah, so I need to use car results and scope car create. So creating cars will be possible just if uh, user is admin. So I 
bind admin, I associated admin, uh, any admin role policy with this permission. And uh, evaluate up is very great because I can check if my authorization rules work as uh, expected. So I will try to check if user admin is able to access car resource or to create car. And here I can see that it's permitted. Nice. But if I try different user like Alice, for example, it, uh, it shouldn't be permitted, of course, because Alice, <coughs> Alice is not member of the admin role. She is just member of user role. Uh, yeah, so at this moment, uh, when I go back to my application and I will log in as Alice, I am still able to buy a new car because I didn't yet configure the policy enforcer, which is needed on the adapter side. Okay, so it's this application properties file. Um, and I will just uncomment policy enforcer. Uh, like it's not so hard to write it by hand, but uh, yeah, you now during presentation, it's safer to uh, pre-configure it. Uh, so this configuration specified that when the REST service is accessed under this <coughs> URL, like cars create, uh, then uh, the car resource and car create scope will be used. So policy enforcer will basically check if user is able to access car results and the scope car create. And uh, this permissive uh, switch on policy enforcer means that uh, just the URLs which are specified uh, will be checked by policy enforcer, but the others which are not specified uh, won't be checked by it. So for all the other things like viewing car and the de deleting car, uh, it's still possible to do it just for uh, simple uh, users which are in just in the role user. And uh, I need to just uh, restart my service. And when I click create car right now, it's not possible anymore. Uh, but admin user should be still able to do it. <coughs> yeah, it works. So he create he was able to create that Ferrari or that mixer. That's nice. Uh, <coughs> so, like, uh, so we saw just uh, like basic uh, policy, but. Uh, like there is also possibility to use like more tricky policies. So JavaScript based <coughs> policy is very, very powerful. Uh, time based policy is very nice for demo purposes because we can, for example, specify that some action is possible just at 25 uh, day days of the month, which is today. Uh, so if I specify it like this, and I will add this new policy to permission. Uh, then, yeah, so decision strategy anonymous means that both policies needs to be met so, so that overall decision is uh, like approved. So you can think of anonymous like uh, logical condition end. So user needs to be admin and uh, action needs to be done on 25th day of the month. Like affirmative is like or, so uh, if I use affirmative, it would mean that the uh, user needs to be admin or uh, it needs to be 25 day of the month. So on 25th day, it will be possible for everyone to uh, create car. But that's not what I want. You mean here? Yes. Uh, I think that uh, I need to type first character. Uh, 
or uh, I can, uh, yeah. I think that, uh, yeah, you need to know at least first character. Uh, it's uh, something which is, uh, yeah, it's uh, like, if, yeah, if you don't, uh, don't uh, know it, it's maybe not so, uh, not so, intuitive. yeah, it's not so intuitive maybe, but uh, in uh, most of the cases you usually know, uh, know this. Uh, so, it's, uh, yeah, like maybe there are, uh, there are some possible improvements of, U of UI, but uh, I'm not sure, to be honest, I'm not the expert of, uh, on UI. Uh, so for me, it's just fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, so if we t retry it, uh, We can see that admin is able <coughs> to create card because both policies vote to permit. And uh, if I change, yeah, so it should be still possible for admin to create card. But if I change the policy, and I will change it to, for example, 24 days of the month, then yeah, it's not possible anymore, and admin can't create new card. So I will rather change it back, and it will be possible to use both 24 and 25, and uh, admin should be able to create new cards. Uh, yeah, so we s we can see that uh, without changing anything on the application side, but just changing the policy, the authorization rules is uh, immediately uh, like. Uh, updated or immediately applied. Uh, so in uh, next step, I will try to show uh, like uh, user managed access uh, or UMA, which is uh, like very nice extension of the authorization capabilities provided by Keycloak. And the uh, main uh, message behind it is that the users are able to share resources uh, with uh, the other users. Uh, and part of this is also asynchronous authorization. Uh, so typical use case for asynchronous authorization is that J. Doe wants to access some pictures of user Alice, and he doesn't have yet permissions to access them, so he uh, just sent request to Alice to be able to see her pictures. And uh, Alice is notified about this request, so she just approves it. And uh, J. Doe can now access Alice's pictures. And anytime Alice can decide and uh, revoke access to her pictures. Uh, so you probably know this use case from uh, applications like Google Drive, uh, when, you want, when you can share your documents with other users. <coughs> and if someone sends you a link and you don't have permission to access any document, you click to something like a request uh, access and the owner is notified about this and he will grant you access. So with this, uh, it's basically uh, easy to, or much easier <coughs> to add some capability like this to your application secured by Keycloak. Uh, so one related thing to this is RPT token, which is basically access token with uh, permissions. And uh, it can be used by front-end application to send requests to services which are protected by policy enforcer. And that then the policy enforcer is able to just uh, verify permissions inside this RPT token. Uh, yeah, so in previous demo, uh, we didn't use this RPT token. So the front-end application sent just the uh, normal uh, better tokens to service. And the uh, service policy enforcer needed to always send a request to Keycloak to verify if access should be granted or not. Uh, it's good that you, you were able to see that it worked in real time. Uh, but the performance of that is not so great. So with this RPT token, it's uh, usually better performance because when you repeatedly want to access any resource, uh, it's the permission is already in, in the RPT token, so service is just able to grant this. And in case that the permission is not in the RPT tokens, 
Uh, then the UMA ticket is sent from the service to the application and application is able to exchange this ticket uh, with existing RPT token uh, to Keycloak server and if <coughs> Keycloak server decides that access should be granted then it will send new RPT which will contain uh, all the uh, old permissions and new permissions as well. So it's something like incremental authorization when the RPT tokens contains uh, permis just those permissions which are needed and which were asked uh, by the service. Uh, and yeah, Keycloak provides restful APIs. Uh, so authorization API is uh, useful for managing, for obtaining those RPT. And protection API is used for managing resources and those things like permission tickets. Uh, so if you want to have to use those, this fine grade authorization, you actually may need to add some code to your application because, for, for example, when you're creating new car uh, or new photo or any other resource, uh, then uh, usually you need also uh, to like create a resource <laughs> on the Keycloak server side. Uh, so that Keycloak is able to later associate uh, like uh, ACLs uh, with this particular resource. Uh, yeah, so if you want to like being able to share single picture, single photo uh, or single car, uh, you need to have resource per car. And otherwise, uh, if you want, for example, like share album, uh, you may need to have resource just for album. Uh, so it's uh, like usually it's some uh, trade-off between how fine-grained uh, your authorization uh, needs to be. Yeah, so in the demo, uh, I will uh, so I will stop the service and up, and uh, I will just. Um, I will just try to switch to different branch uh, when I have when I have uh, okay so wait I need to use check out so I will just check out to some different branch when I have already some more uh, UMA uh, in UMA integration code done in my app. So uh, in this case, I also have uh, things like uh, like when user creates car, there is a resource uh, created. Yeah, so Keycloak has uh, like admin client. I will, I will probably just Yeah, so Keycloak has uh, admin client written in Java, which you can use to uh, like uh, create new resources or, or delete resources as needed. Uh, but uh, everything is available through the REST API as well, and those REST APIs are documented, so it's uh, useful for from any uh, from any language. Uh, and uh, now in uh, yeah, so in admin console, I will just delete my realm and I will create new one uh, because the JSON file in my new branch contains some more fine grade configuration of the policies. And uh, now you can see that I have permissions. So creating car permissions, uh, creating car is possible for any user. But uh, like being able to view car or view detail of the car or delete car is possible only for owner and administrators. And this policy, only owner and administrator policy, is uh, like aggregated policy and it contains of two other policies. And uh, yeah, so it's affirmative, so if you so it's like or. So if user is owner, he can do everything, and if he is administrator, he can do also uh, everything. So <coughs> one of these conditions needs to be met. And uh, any admin policy or administration policy consists also of two policies. 
like any admin policy just checks if a user is admin, but there is also a requirement that admin can create, uh, can access uh, Keycloak from specific IP address. So there is JavaScript policy used here. Uh, and uh, as you can see, JavaScript policy is uh, very flexible. You can check for things like uh, IP address and only owner policy is also based on JavaScript. And uh, you in JavaScript, you have access to some properties like identity, which means uh, authenticated user and the resource is the subject of the policy and here we check if uh, owner of the resource is equivalent to identity. Uh, yeah, so that's the configuration on Keycloak side and on my upside I will just run the service and application. And I think that now uh, when I log in as Alice, for example, uh, I am able to create new car uh, and in RPT token we can see that it contains uh, just permission for creating car, <coughs> but when I ask to view details of this uh, like nice Volkswagen Transporter hippies bus, uh, I can see that RPT token contains some more permission. Uh, because like policy enforcer uh, created a ticket and uh, RPT token now added or Keycloak grant me permission for viewing this new resource. But when I click this again, uh, there is no, no need to like send another request uh, from service to Keycloak because the access is already granted. And uh, yeah, so point of UMA is that uh, so this is account management of Keycloak when users can edit their profile and for UMA they can also share their resources with uh, other users. So I will for example just share uh, like this Volkswagen Transporter bus with uh, the JDO user. And um, now when I log in as JDO I am able to create my car, but I'm also able to view this or view. I'm not able to, I'm just able to list it, uh, but uh, view details is different scope. So I need to ask, uh, ask Alice uh, if, if she can grant me the access for viewing details. And uh, when I log out and I log in again as Alice, uh, in her account management, she can see that uh, J. Doe asked her to uh, being able to like view the hippies bus. So if she approves it, the user J. Doe should be now able to view this bus. Yeah, so as you can see, you can do lots of other things uh, with this. <coughs> and I think that's all which I have. Uh, there are some additional uh, additional resources uh, if you want to try Kiko or uh, access this demo. Or if you have any general questions, you can uh, look at Kiko user mailing list or at, uh, at my mail. And uh, do you have any questions? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, can you repeat? Yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. yeah, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, so it's possible, like regarding this authorization, it's uh, possible to have authorization based on uh, users or based on user attributes uh, as well. And uh, like uh, in general, in account uh, management, uh, users can edit some simple attributes and uh, of themselves. And uh, like this page is customizable, so you can add some more things like for example, address of user or the phone of user. Uh, is this what you mean? Like uh, to having more claims or attributes of user? No, no. it's more like that the user creates a token, a long list token. Uh, and that mm -hmm. so can be used directly uh, towards an application. And then uh, whatever uses that token is that they put them together and authorized in the same manner. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so like what users can do uh, is that uh, like they are just, they are usually not able to manually create the, the tokens uh, or something like that. Uh, but uh, uh, it depends on what like application uh, allows, uh, allows them. Uh, so, uh, I think that probably not, uh, like uh, manually creating tokens is not anything which is uh, directly permitted because you usually need other things like client credentials uh, and so on. So like tokens need to be created on behalf of the client as well. But uh, not sure, maybe I misunderstand your question, sorry, uh, but we can uh, like discuss uh, maybe after. Uh, this session. Uh, any other questions? Uh, what's the life cycle of the RPT token? Like, uh, how often does the application need to uh, like query key cloak to, to get the info about users' permissions? <coughs> mm, yeah, so the life cycle is uh, configurable uh, and uh, it's like in the, it's configurable configurable usually per realm, uh, but can be specified on clients as well. But uh, on the realm, there are lots of timeouts for various things because as we have various use cases, uh, like uh, that we need to add more and more timeouts. But the most important for this use case is access token uh, lifespan, which is five minutes by default. Uh, so the RPT token is also valid for five minutes. Uh, yeah, so for example, if some permission is granted uh, in RPT, uh, then uh, after five minutes, the RPT token always needs to be like uh, recreated. Uh, and uh, because it's like usually trade off between uh, like uh, changed uh, authorization uh, criteria and the performance. Yeah, like if you want to have something like online performance, uh, which we used before, uh, like in the second demo, uh, you may not need this RPT and or at all, and but then your service will always need to query key cloak. Uh, and uh, if you use timeout like this, uh, it's it can happen that there is some stale uh, info in the RPT token, and the authorization shouldn't be granted anymore. But it's usually just for a few minutes. So, uh, like five minutes is uh, like probably like good trade-off for most of the applications, and uh, like OpenID Connect in general have uh, support for the refreshing tokens. Uh, so, uh, uh, usually after each five minutes, uh, the token can be uh, or is uh, refreshed, and. Uh, but if the session is not valid anymore, the refresh uh, won't, uh, won't happen. Uh, and uh, also like things like those will be, uh, uh, will be like always refreshed. Yeah, so I think that's all. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry we have out of time, but if you have more questions, I will be around so uh, we, can, we can discuss uh, later if you want. So thanks. Uh, Thanks everyone for watching.